Hello and welcome. In this video, we're going to take another look at HTML. This video is part of a larger series of videos that focuses on the introduction to HTML and CSS. And specifically in this video, we are going to take another look at tables and nested tables. Now, in a couple of earlier videos, I showed you how you can introduce elements inside of cells in a table. We're going to take that concept a little bit further in that I'm going to show you a couple of different ways how to display multiple elements inside of a cell. Now, when thinking about what would be a useful example for this particular topic, I thought, why don't we kind of combine the two previous examples? In other words, we saw a way of creating some very primitive tables that in one case didn't even have any header information at all. And then a more sophisticated example that had a T head, a T body and a T foot. And I thought, well, that's probably a great way of demonstrating then how we could combine two tables, one inside of another. As it turns out, you can do as many as you practically need to do. Now, before I dig into this, I want to note that tables are meant to be a structure, not a style. And so be careful about overusing the table elements in lieu of styling your page. You really want to have a purpose behind using a table element not just simply for the sake of styling. So to start off with, you'll notice that I have all of my tabs open to the links that we used in our earlier videos, the table tag, the head tag, the body tag, the foot tag, the TR tag, TH and TD tag. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to group this into roughly two categories, the simple and the complicated example. And so the idea is that my outer table is just going to be sort of a table of contents, if you would, describing those two topics. And then each of the rows in the table, one corresponding to the simple example and one corresponding to the more complicated example, will have the information on which elements were used. So without further ado, let's go ahead and get started. Again, you'll see that I've started off with my empty HTML file, and I'm just going to add an H1 tag, and I'm going to call this an example of nested tables. And to begin with, we're going to start off with our outer table. And I am going to go ahead and use the more sophisticated approach here, and that I am going to go ahead and add a T head for the outer table, which is going to then have a TR tag and a TH tag. And for the TH tag for the first column, I'm going to simply specify the topic. And so the idea here is that that is going to be the overarching table of contents, if you would, and the left side or the first column is going to have the topic and the right side is going to have the details. And so what I'm going to do is have then a second column, a second TH element that will in fact be the details. Now, at this point, as we've learned, it's probably a good idea to go ahead and start by introducing a little bit of basic styling because otherwise it's going to be really hard for us to see. And again, we're gonna come back to style sheets, but for right now, I'm gonna keep this one pretty straightforward. I'm gonna go ahead and just include a border and we'll go back to our double, even though it is a little bit heavy. And remember that you want to have that not only for the table element, but also for the TH elements. Again, those extra spaces don't really matter, but I just like to keep things consistent. Now, what we have here is our outer table with a single row for the head. And we want to go ahead and throw in our body element. As I mentioned in the last video, the idea here is to go ahead and possibly include a T foot. We may not need this for the outer table, but just go ahead and get it set up. And then we're gonna go ahead and look at this page just to see what this one looks like. So far, not very interesting, but we can go ahead and populate now that first column with the simple and complicated text, however you want to go ahead and describe this. So we'll come back over here in our table body. Let's go ahead and add our two rows that we know we're going to want to have. We're gonna go ahead and have two columns in each of the rows. 
And we can go ahead and style this based on the way we styled our TH. So again, there's our TD style. And then since we know we're going to have at least two rows, we could do an intermediate example. But to start off with, we're going to have a simple and a complicated. So we're going to call this simple and then more complicated. And again, let's see what we have here. If we were to refresh this, looks pretty much like our first tables did. Now, the idea here is I want to be able to display then multiple pieces of information inside of the details. And again, how you would structure this might depend on what type of data that you're trying to display. But in this particular case, what I want to do is I want to display all of the links associated with the simple table example that we did. And if you recall, that was the table, the TR, the TH, and the TD tags, with the TH tag being optional. And what I want to do is I want to essentially insert or inject a smaller table inside of this details table. Now, I'm going to forego having a head on that table. And instead, I'm just going to focus on populating it with the details. And I'm going to have it be a two column table with the first column being the tag and then a description to a description combined with the link taking you to the W3 schools page. So to do this, we're just going to go ahead and put in another table tag we're going to jump straight into the TR. And again, since we know this is going to be two columns, I'm just going to go ahead and put in my TD elements. Now, to emphasize that this is going to be our inner table, I'm going to intentionally style this one differently. You don't necessarily have to style this one differently. However, just to emphasize that this is, in fact, our inner table, we're going to go ahead and make this one a dotted border. And again, just like we saw in our earlier examples, it is useful to go ahead and populate the style for the TD elements. And hopefully at this point, you can start to understand why we probably don't want to have our style in line with our elements, although it is perfectly acceptable to do that. It's just hard to manage. I'm gonna go ahead and duplicate this so that I have at least a couple of rows and notice here, I don't have any column information. In other words, I don't have any head information. So I'm kind of just guessing, or you rather as the viewer are kind of guessing as to what my intentions are. And again, that is kind of intentional because I want you to see why having a TH or a table head is a good idea for the purposes of consuming HTML. All right, so we're going to go ahead and save this, come out here, let's refresh this and let's see what this looks like. Again, you can sort of see a small table forming there. It doesn't really have a lot of detail to it. It's not clear exactly what's going on. So let's go ahead and start by populating these inner, these cells in this inner table. As I said, the goal here is I want to have the element name. So in this case, we knew that it was a table. And then what I'd like to do is I'd like to link the W3 Schools site for the table tag. And so in this case, what I'm going to do is I'm simply going to copy and paste the URL and the description over to the second column. I'm going to add a, a href here. You know, paste the URL in there. And then in this case, I know well enough what their site uses. So I'm going to just manually type this in. This is going to be, again, our ampersand LT semicolon indicates less than table and then GT or rather ampersand GT semicolon and then tag. Now, at this point, you've probably gotten good enough at the copying and pasting to recognize that we could just simply copy and paste this second cell over and over again. But before we do that, let's save this and let's see 
if this starts to look like what we had in mind. So if we refresh this, you'll see that now I have this dotted border around that inner table and the table element is indicated and then the hyperlink in the second column of that inner table. Now, going back to our source, we could probably skip the extra step here and delete this and simply copy now this newly modified row and just make the critical changes. So we said that there were four elements associated with the simple table with the first element being the table, the second element being the TH, And why don't we take a second to emphasize the fact that that element was technically optional as we saw earlier and as we are seeing now. And again, we probably also wanna go ahead and change this here. So this is our TH tag. The third row in that nested table can be our TR tag. And again, just carefully going in and changing all the references here. And then ultimately our TD. And again, what order you do this in doesn't really matter too much. You could probably make a strong argument that TR should come before the TH. And I tell you what, I am probably gonna go ahead and make that quick change. So in other words, what I'm going to do is I'm going to just simply copy or remove that particular row and I'm gonna put it immediately after the table tag. Now, what did we accomplish here? Well, if we refresh this, you'll see that I now have that nested table that has a table inside of it. Now, what I'd like to do is I'd like to do this just a little bit differently for my second example. So this is a table inside of a table. What I'm going to do this time around is I'm going to have another table inside of this cell, but instead of doing multiple rows, I'm going to have a single row with two columns. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how you can insert a P tag inside of a single cell. And then ultimately, again, display these links just a tiny bit different but the goal still will be to have a nested table in this second cell. So let's come back then to our HTML one more time. And again, for our second more complicated example, we're gonna go about inserting a table, this time a single row with two columns, two TDs. And again, to emphasize the difference here, how about if we have a little bit of fun again with the style for this third table and we'll make this one just a little bit different. So we'll do a border and let's do a grooved border on this one. That's one that we haven't done yet in this particular example. And again, what I'm gonna do is I'm going to go ahead and style the TD elements. And then what I wanna do is for each of these TD elements, I'm going to insert a P tag and remember that a P tag can have multiple lines in it by using the BR tag. And so what we're going to do is again, just to have it a little bit different than we did with the first example with the table, but ultimately something visually or essentially roughly visually the same, but you're not going to be able to access the data in the individual cells. And ultimately the first approach we'll see will probably be a little bit better. So if you go back to the more complicated example, you'll recall that you had a table element. I'm gonna follow this up with a BR tag. We had a T head element. Again, I'm gonna follow this up with a BR tag. A T body element. And then a T foot element. Now, you can optionally go ahead and include the additional elements for the TH, TR, and TD. But at this point, what we want to do is we want to jump down to this second cell. And again, what we're going to do is instead of using a, another table or another 
uh, row rather, what we're going to do is we're going to insert another P tag, except this time what we're going to do is we're going to insert a A tag with an A H ref followed by a BR. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to very carefully copy and paste however many I need that correspond to the number of elements I've listed in the first cell. Again, you can see that we're kind of guessing here, meaning I have to keep track of this. And so you'll see that I have four items in the P tag, four terms, four tags, however you want to look at it in the P tag. I'm going to go ahead and save this so you can see where we're going with this. And you'll see that, again, a different way of visually representing the data. Now, what I want to do is I want to have my second column have the hyperlinks associated with these four tags. And so we'll come back over here. We'll start with our table tag again. Remember how the links work to the W3 schools. I'm going to copy and paste this now into my AHREF here making the changes according to which tags I'm trying to reference. So for the second one, it is going to be T body. For the third, or rather, I'm sorry, T head, T body, and then T foot. And again, by this point, you're probably starting to see why this is probably not the best way of going about doing this and why, again, sometimes a table actually does make sense. So again, since I'm familiar with the W3 School site, we're going to go ahead and do this part manually. There's the ampersand less than, which is going to give our less than sign followed by the semicolon, and the table followed by the ampersand GT and semicolon. And again, we're just going to copy and paste and modify. And remember that this is the text that's seen by the user. So this second one is going to be our T head. The third one is going to be our T body. And the fourth one is going to be our T foot. I'm going to go ahead and save this. I'm going to come back over here one more time to my web browser. And I'm simply going to go ahead and refresh this. And again, you can see here a couple of different things that are going on. Number one is it didn't completely fill this second cell. We can, in fact, control that using our style. But more importantly, this is one cell as opposed to the earlier example where there are multiple cells. Now, again, there's two things going on here. First of all, the structure. This first example is probably a better structure, even though it is a little more sophisticated. You can more easily pull out the individual cells in that nested table. The second structure is perhaps a little bit simpler, maybe a little bit easier to create, a little bit easier to keep up with, arguably could be a little more complicated to keep up with because you have to keep track of the number of elements on the left and the number of elements on the right. So again, there's pros and cons to each approach, but you see there are multiple ways to combine the elements inside of a table tag. So hopefully you found this video useful. In other videos, I'll show you how to insert images and other elements inside of tables. We'll also take a look at styling tables later on once we get further into styling and style sheets. But as always, if you have any questions, comments, or concerns, don't hesitate to reach out to me. And thank you for watching.